Our last story tonight is about Claire from Norfolk. Now, she grew up just like any other ordinary little girl until she was hit by a debilitating illness. There's no known cure, and it can affect even the healthiest of people. Claire let me spend a week with her so I could get an insight into her lonely life with Emmy. I was first diagnosed when I was 12 years old. It was two years after I first became ill. I'd been to lots of different GPs and they'd all said that it was everything from bullying to uh, period pains to uh, migraines and basically none of them knew what was going on. I've been bed bound for the past six years um, but before that I was up and down and so the last six years have definitely been the worst but things are slowly starting to improve. It's a kind of a perspective on a world that when I'm trapped inside a room I can still see you know things that are going on outside and it's very it's very relaxing to watch just to kind of see you know the animals that don't have any problems don't have any worries just you know all they do is you know feed and sleep and it, sometimes that feels like pretty much all I do. Eventually dad found out about an ME specialist it was amazing to actually find somebody who kind of believed what I was saying and understood, you know, what I was going through. I have to ring a bell for Mum to get her to come up and see me because it takes too much energy just to go to the top of the stairs and call down. Morning, Claire. Morning. Postman's been She brings Excellent. my post up from downstairs, which is one of the highlights of my day. I love hearing from people. Um, I've got lots of pen pals who've got ME, so it's good to to get that contact from the outside world and after that I then have a rest for half an hour before I go on to do something else. What would you like for breakfast this morning? Um, mm. Can I have some toast and some tea? Maybe some honey? Yep, I can get that for you. Why are you taking the crust off? It just saves us some chewing because chewing takes a lot of energy and uh, it just means uh, energy left for some, doing something else in the rest of the day. Most of my friends have got ME so they know what my restricted life is but there is such a different, you know, scale of ME. Um, they're still having to be careful, they're still having to rest, and there are still things that they can't do. But they're still, you know, they're going to university, they've got jobs, and, you know, they're living a normal life. And that can be quite hard to hear about it, because I know they're still going through things, and I know they're still ill, but I wish that I was at that level of illness kind of thing. I wish I, I could be, you know, having the energy to do that. And I find it quite difficult hearing what people are up to and that, and I get jealous and not that I don't want them to be doing it but that I want to be doing it as well and so it, yeah it can be quite hard to you know to deal with that. She uh, used to be off swimming that was her favourite sport and uh, she used to do that several times a week and uh, dancing. In fact she didn't used to stop really she was always on the go doing something or other. When you look back on this time, Anita, yeah. is it, obviously you had lots of hopes and, and aspirations for Claire, didn't you? Yes, yes. I mean, she was a very bright little girl and uh, obviously was going to go far. I think she probably still will, but it's all been held back by the ME. And uh, it's quite interesting to see all her friends there that have all been to university and now qualified and are out in the world working. And, uh, and she's not... That upset you? It can do if I think about it. I didn't have a teenage life. I have never been to a club, never been to a pub, I've never gone out to the cinema with a group of friends. I haven't gone to university, I haven't had a job, I haven't done anything like that. So. I haven't had a teenage life. I feel my life has been completely different to everybody else who's my age. Do you want me to start serving rice? Yes, please. Okay. 
when we were at the very lowest, I have an expression, get do, and she was so low that you couldn't say a full sentence to her, and the cl a kiss from Claire was literally just, we touch, she put a finger out, and I just touch a finger, and the two words, get or do, was signify, can I get anything, can I do anything? And when you think that an 18-year-old was reduced to that level of communication, it was very difficult. I found it particularly very frustrating. Most of the time they eat downstairs and then come up and see me after I've had a rest. Um, sometimes they come up, if it's a special occasion, somebody's birthday or we've got a takeaway or something, they'll come up for part of the meal and then they'll go downstairs for the rest of it. I have to use plastic cutlery to do everything to be able to eat because metal cutlery is too heavy and it's hard work and it uses extra energy before you count the energy of actually digesting the food. Do you find it quite lonely? Yes. Yeah, when I was um, only able to talk for about 30 seconds at a time, that was definitely the hardest thing, um, being able to kind of get the interaction in that very short space of time. And there was the majority of the time I was on my own and it was very, very boring, very lonely. So now I see them for a lot longer and I can talk for a lot longer. So it, it, it's not as bad as it was. And definitely, you know, it's, but it's still difficult. It's hard, you know, being trapped in a room and not being able to go down to meet, you know, to see them when I want company, I have to call them to come up and see me. It was very disruptive. In the early days, I felt like a great gaping void. It was almost like a death, like a bereavement. Someone who'd been involved, and Claire, as you've probably gathered by now, was, is, is a, should we say, a very central, pivotal character within the family. And to suddenly have someone who was bright and vibrant and interactive just suddenly drops away, fades out, um, just left a gaping void so that a meal table up until she was eight or nine was set for four and suddenly it was only set for three. It's pulled us and it's tested us to our measure. It's, it's certainly, from a marriage point of view, it's been very difficult at times, although at the end of the day I would say that we're far closer. Certainly, you know, I, I think all four of us. If I concentrated on the four walls, on the door, on the window, how I can't really get out, it feels like being in a cage, but if I think like that, it's going to feel worse and it's not going to help because I can't do anything, I can't change it, so I just get on with it and try and make this life as, you know, as much as possible and do what I can. The worst thing is that I can't do anything to help really get her better. Um, I'd love to be able to do something I could do to help her get out of, uh, out of the ME. What's your wish for the, for the future? My wish is to be well, is to be healthy and to live a normal life, to have all the opportunities that everybody else has and to be able to take them up and do what I want when I want, to have a career and meet someone, get married, have children, just the normal things that everybody wants, that's all, that's all I've ever wanted.